Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Let's seek the truth and travel the long road to justice together. What you know, alibiers? Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. Good to have you here. It's Friday. Hope you have a nice relaxing weekend planned. Before we get started, you know what to do. If you're on YouTube and you haven't yet, hit subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, and you can ring my bell if you want notifications. Click on that bell button. It'll let you know every time I upload new content. Music fact of the day. When David Bowie heard Nirvana's cover of The Man Who Sold the World, he said he was blown away by the fact Kurt Cobain liked his work and said it would have been nice to have worked with him, but just talking with him would have been real cool. That would have been a collaboration that would have blown our minds, I'm sure. This trial started yesterday. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed is charged with involuntary manslaughter in the death of the beautiful Helena Hutchins. She was a cinematographer on the set. So Helena Hutchins was killed on the set of the movie Rust, October 21st, 2021, by a live bullet from what should have been blanks. Helena was married with a nine-year-old son at the time of her death. She was born in Ukraine and, as a child, lived on a Russian military base in the Arctic. She took an interest in film and journalism early on. In college, she studied economics and international journalism. Then she met her husband while working in Los Angeles. They hit it off, and when she moved to the U.S., she earned her master's degree in 2015 from the American Film Institute. From there, she started working in film and TV as a cinematographer. Everybody who knew her said it was a job she loved. She was working as a cinematographer on the set of Rust when she was shot and killed. Her friends and colleagues say that she was a gifted artist and a loving wife and mother. The defendant in this trial, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, was hired to perform kind of a dual role. She was a props assistant and the armorer on set. Props assistant, they're responsible for sourcing all the things the actors and actresses will touch in a scene. If you see a kitchen scene with dishes and glasses and stuff on the wall, that's what they do. As an armorer, she would source and bring firearms to the set. For a Western like Rust, she would have to find old revolvers and shotguns. They show a photo of the gun Alec Baldwin was using on set, also the gun that killed Miss Hutchins. These are not prop guns, they are legitimate firearms, and with live ammunition, they will fire. The gun looks old, but it's brand new. Perfectly functioning gun that was purchased from the manufacturer for the movie. Hannah also sources and purchases dummy and blank ammunitions. What is blank ammunition? A blank round is easy to tell. The end of that is crimped, and blanks are used because when the trigger is pulled, there's just enough gunpowder in the blank that causes a pop and then smoke when the trigger is pulled, but there's no projectile that shoots through the barrel of the gun. A second round used on sets are dummy rounds, and dummies look like real bullets. You can't really tell it from a live bullet just by glancing. Therefore, every round has to be thoroughly checked before loaded into a firearm on set to make sure you're not putting a live round into a gun. Another responsibility for Hannah was to check every single round to be sure that it's a dummy round and not a live round. There are three ways to check that. The first way is to shake it. There's little BBs or springs inside, and when you shake it, you can hear the noise confirming that that's a dummy round and not a live round. If you're watching on YouTube, by the way, I do have photos that they showed in trial on the screen. Another way to tell if it's a dummy round is sometimes there are holes drilled into the side of the casing. Third way is there is no primer. And what's a primer? If you flip the bullet over on a dummy round, the primer is hollow. Normally, there would be a little stopper. It's kind of like a little button that fits right in there on the bottom where it's just flat and round. Another function of the armorer is to check the firearm before it's brought onto set. When it's time for it to be used, they're required to present it to the first assistant director to double check that that's a dummy round. Also, the actor receiving the weapon has the opportunity to have it inspected in front of them. Just to clarify again, it is indeed a dummy round. The prosecutor said that Hannah didn't always adhere to these safety procedures. Witnesses will testify she often rushed through this step or skipped this check altogether. On October 21st of 2021, the day of the shooting, the cast and crew were at the Bonanza Creek Ranch just outside of the city limits of Santa Fe, New Mexico. The property is thousands of acres, and also they have built an Old West set. 
that has been used in several productions. Part of the set is the church, and it is inside this church set where the shooting happened. The day was chaotic on the set. The evening before, a group of camera operators had safety concerns and actually sent an email to the production team saying that they would be quitting. The next day, producers decided to continue and just use less camera equipment than normal. On the screen here, you'll see a video they showed in the trial of Alec Baldwin rehearsing that scene. The filming that morning was normal. They filmed several different scenes, and leading up to lunch, cast and crew were working inside that church to get shots of Alec Baldwin sitting on a church pew, manipulating the revolver, and also practicing a draw from his holster. That was completed before lunch, then they went to a lunch break. And during lunch, Hannah took the gun from Mr. Baldwin and took it back to the gun safe, which was located on a prop cart. After lunch, production decided to continue working, but they weren't filming. They were doing blocking, which is a rough rehearsal where crew gets lightings and different things situated before moving into an actual rehearsal. The prosecution said there's no need for an actor to have a live firearm or for one even to be on set during blocking. The actor could use a stick, a rubber gun, or just anything really to mimic the gun. That day, she was asked to provide the real gun for blocking, and that was in her discretion to do so. She loaded the gun in the morning with five rounds. The revolver, by the way, it's a six-shooter. After lunch, she got the gun from the safe and then cleaned that six slot that had not been loaded that morning and then proceeded to load that round in there. She took the firearm to the church and then handed it to the first assistant director, whose name is Dave Halls. The state said that they did a sloppy and incomplete safety check of the gun. They didn't shake the round to see if it made any noise. They also didn't check for the hole drilled into the side of the casing. Instead, she cracked open the gun and partially spun the cylinder to show the rounds to the assistant director. They weren't removed from the gun and they weren't checked. By the way, when I'm just sitting here talking, I'm going to run some footage that was shown later in the day that we'll get to on tomorrow's episode just to have something in the background for you to watch other than me flapping my gums. After the shooting happened and Hannah was being interviewed, she stated that when she removed the gun from the safe for filming in the afternoon, she did not check the ammunition. When she pulled the gun from the safe and put that sixth bullet in, she didn't check that round either. She didn't check any of the rounds in the gun. Witnesses will testify that when Hannah got the firearm from the safe after lunch, she should have pulled the projectiles and checked them again. Then, when handing the firearm to the first assistant director, she should have done a second complete ammo check with Mr. Halls because that helps prevent what happened to Miss Hutchins. Because the dummy rounds look so similar to real rounds, spinning the barrel to check just wasn't enough. She handed the firearm to Mr. Halls, left the church, and Mr. Halls handed the firearm to Mr. Baldwin. As the blocking session was underway, Miss Hutchins and crew were working, adjusting cameras, and Mr. Baldwin was practicing holding his gun for the upcoming filming and was manipulating that firearm. It discharged, and unfortunately hit Miss Hutchins. That single projectile went straight through Miss Hutchins and proceeded to strike the film's director, Joel Shuza, in the shoulder. Another crew member in the church called 911 to report the shooting and also to ask for medical assistance. Due to how remote the location was, it did take some time for help to get there. They sent a life flight for her, and they worked to stabilize her, got her on the flight to the hospital, but sadly, she succumbed to her injuries. The state said that due to the fact she did not make the vital safety checks of the ammunition, the defendant acted negligently, and the decisions that she made that day contributed to Mrs. Hutchins' death. Leading up to the 21st, there were other ways the defendant was negligent on set. Witnesses will testify that she regularly failed to carry out her duties as an armorer her conduct was unprofessional and sloppy. She routinely left guns and ammo lying around unattended. Her gun safe and cart were usually disorganized. So where did the live ammunition come from? It's incomprehensible and it shouldn't happen. It's an industry rule that live ammo has no place on set because it's easy to mistake live ammo from a dummy round. When officers arrived on scene, the boxes of ammo were on a cart. For those of you not watching on YouTube, it's just very messy and disorganized. The officers removed the boxes and placed those in the seat of a police cruiser. They showed the boxes of ammunition sitting in the seat. This is the same box that she used to pull projectiles from to load into that gun. The box of dummies was taken back to the sheriff's office for inventory. They were also photographed by a crime scene technician. 
Overall, there were 37 cartridges in the box labeled dummies. The state also points out, if you're looking on YouTube, in the bottom left corner, you see that little silver round button looking thing on the bottom. I have a red arrow pointing to that. That is a live round. The prosecution is pointing out that not only the projectile that shot and killed Miss Hutchins wasn't the only live ammunition on set. There were a total of six live bullets found on set, and they have common characteristics with that silver primer. They had to determine when the live rounds ended up on set, so they began looking through photos and videos from the first day of filming on. They noticed several points in time where cartridges with that silver primer, which would indicate live ammo, were seen on gun belts and bandoliers the cast were wearing on set. In this photo, you'll see some circles on that. They found a photo from October 10th where a live round was seen sitting on Miss Gutierrez's lap and she failed to identify it. The other dummy rounds purchased for the movie did not arrive until October 12th. The live ammunition could not have been from that shipment. This shipment was supplied by someone other than Hannah, the one that arrived on October 12th. The state says this will help you when the defendant's attorney claims sabotage on the set or that the live rounds came from someone other than her. It'll show you the live rounds were on set on the 10th and the other dummy rounds didn't arrive until two days later on the 12th. The rounds that you see there on the bottom right were brought with her on set. On November 9th, Hannah came into the sheriff's office for an interview. She was asked about which box she was pulling ammo from. There was a box with the label JS, and she told the investigators that the box was peculiar and she didn't know where it came from and didn't think that was the one that came on set. The day before this interview, Hannah asked her dad to send a photo of the 45 long box of dummies that he had at home. He texted her a photo. If you're on YouTube, you can see they're identical boxes. The state says this is more evidence the box came from the defendant. The live rounds spread their way through the set, landing in the actors' costumes and firearms on different dates, including October 13th, 15th, 17th, and the day of the shooting, the 21st. The state says Hannah was unprofessional and failed to do the essential safety functions of her job, which meant live ammo spread on the set. She treated safety protocols as optional instead of as if lives depended on her doing her job correctly and a direct result of her failures caused Ms. Hutchins' death. The second crime she is charged with is tampering with evidence, the day of the shooting and after Gutierrez left the police interview, she went to her hotel. A crew member decided to check on Hannah in her room. So the crew member visited and as the person got up to leave, Hannah handed her something and asked her to hold on to it. As the crew member walked out the door and down the hall, didn't realize what they were handed, but looked down and saw a bag of what appeared to be cocaine from Hannah. The crew member was surprised Hannah, somebody she hardly knew, would hand her that to hold on to. The crew member disposed of that, but over the next several weeks, Hannah would text this crew member asking her to return her stuff. You'll hear from witnesses who worked with Hannah daily on set, some who were inside the church and who witnessed the shooting. At the end of openings, the state highlighted a transcript between Hannah and a detective where Hannah said, it's a real gun, I wish I had checked more. For the defense, when they got up, essentially they said that there were findings by workplace safety regulators who said there were problems that reached beyond Hannah's control. She was being rushed. Also, she had two separate jobs to perform. Hannah requested resources from her manager and those requests were ignored. Production and the state have made her a scapegoat. Several unconnected events had to happen for this to happen. The defense attorney says Alec Baldwin pointed a gun on set with the hammer cocked or pulled the trigger, pointed it right at Miss Hutchins and pulled the trigger, hitting her. Hannah wasn't in the church. Alec Baldwin was in the church. Also, actors know you don't point a gun at anyone. There were mistakes by production. The state tried to put all this on Hannah. He was 24 years old and hired for two separate jobs, being props and an armorer. They would make Hannah roll cowboy cigarettes, and that would take away from her armory duties. OSHA investigated and found fault with production, numerous flaws and mistakes with the production, but not with Miss Gutierrez-Reed. It was a rushed set. 
several safety errors, and production put her in that position. They were negligent. She emailed the production manager and said, when I can't focus on my armory duties, this is when mistakes happen. They did not allow her to perform her duties like she should have been able to. The defense brings up someone named Sarah Zachary and says that's someone you'll hear about. She was the head of the props department. Sarah had to source the firearms and ammo. What you heard in openings wasn't correct. That was not Hannah's job. It was Sarah's. Hannah was supposed to help when needed in props. Professional armorers will tell you it's unadvisable to have a part-time armorer. It's a terrible idea. You'll hear that Hannah took the gun to Mr. Hall's. He had the weapon and did not inspect it fully. And Mr. Baldwin didn't inspect it at all. When he's sitting in the pew doing that draw, you'll hear how dangerous that is pulling that across your body and then pulling it across other people. Hannah requested to train Mr. Baldwin in a cross draw, and you'll hear he did not set that training up. The shooting was in a cross draw. The blocking didn't require him to draw the gun. It was supposed to be a close-up of his hand. It ended up pointed at the camera and Miss Hutchins. Obviously, guns should never be pointed at another person. There's camera tricks that can be used, and Mr. Baldwin violated safety rules. The state says live rounds have a silver primer. That's the core of their argument, but the state didn't tell you there's numerous dummy rounds with silver primers on set. An FBI report will show you 16 primer dummies with silver were found on the prop truck. The theory the silver primers were all live ammunition isn't true. Production sourced these dummies from Seth Kinney of PDQ Props. After the shooting, Seth Kinney was extremely active in contacting the sheriff to work with them and point the finger away from himself. Sarah Zachary works for Seth at PDQ Props. She worked on set, but under him. After the shooting, Sarah Zachary sent a text to Seth and said, emergency. They talk on the phone and whatever was said, we don't know, but here's what happens next. Sarah removes rounds from two of the actor's guns and throws them away. That is seen tampering. Sarah told the sheriff, I was panicked, and that's all I can tell you. When she was interviewed, she said, I cleared them away because that's what we do after scenes. The defense says, you, meaning the jury, determine her credibility. It makes no sense to throw them away, and why throw them away after a call with Seth? She also shook rounds. They didn't shake, so she threw them away in the trash. She tells law enforcement she threw them away, but they don't find them that day. We don't have those rounds. They were never recovered. Another instance of scene tampering, Sarah carried items to the prop truck from the prop cart knowing there had been a shooting. We don't know what was taken from the cart. We know one box, Seth's box, was found in the prop truck. You'll see on video right after the shooting, Hannah was segregated from all the other witnesses. He feels he needs to stay with her because she's distraught. He tells someone else to get the prop cart over by the church. He should have got the prop cart it's law enforcement's job to secure the scene. We're here on a reasonable doubt standard. You can't convict unless you prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Here we have theories based on evidence that was tampered with. Phil Reed is the father of Hannah, one of the most respected armorers in the business. He's trained Brad Pitt, Sharon Stone, Denzel Washington, worked on Tombstone, worked on 310 to Yuma, and he trained Hannah her whole life. She also went to film school and got a bachelor's degree. She was ready for this job. She had one job prior to this, and that was as an assistant. She was on set from the time she was a little girl. And right before Rust, Del Reed and Seth were working on Yellowstone 1883 in Texas. Del Reed brought live rounds to Texas, and he and Seth were going to train the actors on a shooting range, not on a set. This is for the actors to get a feel of the recoil and a feel of the gun before they film scenes. Seth Kinney kept the live ammunition rounds in a can and did not give them to Thel Reed. Seth is the primary supplier to the Rust set. You're going to hear the investigation never took Seth's fingerprints, DNA, or cell phone evidence. We are missing evidence. There was no request to the FBI to check the live rounds for fingerprints or DNA. The lab was requested to test the firearm Mr. Baldwin used to see if it functioned correctly, but no tests on the live rounds. That's evidence you will never see or have because the government didn't do it. You can't tell a live round from a dummy by a photo. They're made to look like live rounds. It's to fool the person watching the movie. The state showed a hole in the round. Not all dummies are made that way. Some don't shake. 
Some don't have a hole in them. In the crime scene investigation report, you will see that round didn't shake. It's a dummy, but it doesn't shake. This is highly dangerous, and Hannah was faced with dealing with a mixed match of dummies that she had to deal with. OSHA will tell you she was rushed, working two jobs, and not getting the help she asked for. The first assistant director will tell you she did a good job with safety. He handed the firearm to Baldwin. He never should have had that gun. We will have witnesses who works on movies that's going to tell you it's unusual for the first assistant director to handle that. They're blaming it on Hannah because she's an easy target. He says production rushed this movie. Hannah had no control over that. OSHA will tell you they were fined the largest in the history of New Mexico because they did not have a procedure to make sure live rounds weren't on set. Halls didn't conduct daily safety meetings. There was no instruction before Mr. Baldwin handled the gun in the church. And Mr. Baldwin was also one of the lead producers, the main actor, and he really controlled the set. He violated the most basic safety rules. Don't point the gun at anyone. Treat all guns as if they're loaded. Don't put your hand on the trigger. He violated all of those, not Hannah. So that was it for openings tomorrow. We're going to keep going and finish out the first day on Sunday. I'll wrap up the entire testimony from today, which is Friday, February 23rd. That way, come Monday, we're all ready and we'll be caught up. I hate getting behind covering trials, but I didn't think I was going to cover this one and then it sucked me in. So that's it for today. I hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you soon.